Hello, my name is Richard. I'm the pastor at the King's Church in Adelston in Surrey. And we are continuing to look at the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus' famous teaching from on the mountainside to his disciples. Um, if you remember last week, we looked at how Jesus um, taught on giving, praying, and fasting. And within that teaching, uh, we find a more in-depth teaching uh, on prayer. So we're going to look at that today. So I'm going to read to you from Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 9. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. So Jesus starts by saying, this is how you should pray. We call this the Lord's Prayer. Um, some people call it the, the Our Father. And it's a prayer that unites Christians across all the traditions of Christianity. And for people outside uh, our faith, it's actually sometimes the only thing they know about Christianity, this one prayer. Somehow they've been taught it at some point in their lives and they know this Our Father prayer. Now, as you might expect, a lot has been written about this prayer. A lot has been spoken about this prayer. And I could go on for hours um, about that, but I'm only going to touch on a few points today. First of all, I'm going to start with my relationship uh, with this prayer. Um, at some point, I can't tell you exactly when, but at some point I absorbed or was taught this prayer. Um, I don't know whether it is through church or through Sunday school at church or maybe just regular standard school where back in the olden days we used to pray in our assemblies. Somewhere along the line, I learned this prayer early on. And I think as I became <laughs> a, a slightly militant, zealous Christian in my late teens and early 20s, um, part of me wanted to ditch a lot of my religious, religious upbringing and head towards this, what I thought was um, a spirit-led free faith, which in many ways it was. But within that, because I, at that kind of age, you know, in our late teens and our 20s, we tend to think we know everything, right? So um, even if we think we know better than Jesus. Um, I don't know. It was, it was an interesting time. Anyway, um, as a result of that kind of attitude that sort of grew in me, through no fault of just except my own, um, I seem to have this kind of superior attitude that um, developed around this Lord's Prayer. Um, I saw it as maybe a childish prayer, a prayer when you maybe have nothing else to say, um, a prayer that is said religiously by religious people but doesn't really have any conviction or any soul or any spirit behind it. Um, if I'm honest, it seemed a bit tedious, a bit worn out. Um, so back then, for me, prayer had, had to be spontaneous, it had to be free, it had to be impassioned, it had to be deep, it had to be profound, um, and not using this childish set formula. So if I'm honest, I kind of steered clear of the Lord's Prayer. Um, now, I've matured a little bit, and I've come to realise that not only is this a beautiful and perfect framework for prayer, powerful prayer at that, this is actually Jesus' own teaching. This, is, he says, is how we should pray. So regardless of whatever you think you should pray, how you think you should pray, Jesus says, this is how you should pray. And so now I'm older, I pray this prayer regularly, both in the form of words that are written in Matthew, and also um, as a framework and a pattern for longer prayers, longer, more free prayers, but nevertheless guided by this Lord's Prayer. So if you want my advice on how to pray, then I would take Jesus' advice on how to pray. Because sometimes people ha ask, how do I pray? Well, let's listen to Jesus. He says, when you pray, pray like this. 
This is the prayer to say. Now, we can learn this prayer um, as a set of words, praying um, exactly the words that you find in Matthew chapter 6, and there are many different translations of that, but they're all you know, based around the same kind of thing. You can, uh, you can learn that prayer as a set of words, or, and you can do that, and as well as that, you can learn it as a, if you like, a framework, a, um, a guide to how to pray. So let's look at the prayer uh, today briefly, and I'm going to talk about it as a framework for how we pray. Um, prayer pointers, if you like, guidance on, on the direction of our prayers. So the prayer starts with God himself. The focus is first on him, who he is to us and what he is like. Our Father. You see, God is not an anonymous, disconnected sort of entity out there somewhere. He is the Father of all. And we get to pray our Father, which means we have a father-child relationship with God. And that speaks of love, it speaks of security, it speaks of uh, closeness, it speaks of a generosity. So we know when we come to pray, we're praying to our God who is our Father. That's where our prayer begins. It goes on to say, hallowed be your name, or holy is your name. And so as we begin our prayer, it's, it's a worship of our Father, our God, who is like no other. So prayer starts with God himself. It must focus on our Father as we pray, who is so utterly other, so utterly different to anyone else we can know. Now that may sound obvious, but this prayer teaches us that when we pray, we must first bring our focus and our worship on God. Otherwise, it's quite possible and quite likely that our prayer will be focused on, guess who? Yes, that's right, us, me in particular, and our problems, and all the things that we need, oh, oh, and it's all about me. But we must remember, as we pray, it's stating the obvious, but Jesus is making sure that we know the obvious. We pray to God, our Father. He is the focus of our attention. And so it says, our Father. Jesus says, our Father. Not my personal God, I'm not praying to just my God, but I'm praying to our shared Father of all. And as we pray like that, we enter into the relationship and the community of God himself. We don't pray for my, but our. This isn't just about me, but this is about us. Prayer is about us with God. So every time I pray this, I don't just pray for my needs, but I pray for the needs of our church. I pray for the needs of our family. I pray for the needs of our community. I pray for the needs of our whole entire world because I'm praying to our Father and I'm asking for our needs. So as we pray for our daily bread, we bring, as well as ourselves, we bring the millions of hungry people around the world before God who are stuck in poverty and we identify with them, and we pray with them and say, Lord, give us this day our daily bread. And as we pray for forgiveness, we seek God's grace and God's mercy for the wrongs and the sins, not only of us, but our family, our community, our world. We're all a part of this in some way. And as we pray for, for deliverance from evil, we lift those who are oppressed everywhere around the world before God and say, Lord, help us, save us, rescue us. Not just me, but all of us. And in praying this prayer in this way, we pray for ourselves, but never just for ourselves. Because we're always praying for the community of God's people. We're identifying with the world uh, as we pray our. And as a result, we're praying in a priestly way, meaning... The priest is the one who represents the world to God and, the, and God to the world. So as we pray our before God, we're actually bringing the prayers of all the world to God and saying, Lord, we're praying. We are praying these prayers. 
Now, the Lord's Prayer has three areas of specific petition that we offer to God. We pray for provision, our daily bread. We pray for our freedom um, from our debts and our sins to be forgiven. And we pray for our protection, deliverance from temptation and evil. These things are really the basic needs of life, the real basic needs of life. Provision, freedom and protection from evil. So it's right to pray for our daily bread, to recognise that our daily needs, in all shapes and forms, come from God. And so we seek him for them. And sometimes, in times of plenty, individual plenty for ourselves, this may challenge us to focus on the needs of those who are less well off than ourselves. Because we don't just pray for me. So when I have plenty, I, can't, I don't just need to leave this bit of the prayer out, but I pray, give us our daily bread. And that includes the needs of the world too. It's right to seek God's forgiveness, to find forgiveness for the wrongs we have done. God is a gracious and forgiving God. And as we pray, forgive us, we invite God to forgive sin in the world. And as we do that, the prayer challenges us, ourselves, to forgive us as we forgive others. The challenge is that this prayer will actually change us. In fact, all real prayer challenges a change in us, as well as us seeking God to bring change himself in this world. So it's a real challenge in the prayer for a transformation in our hearts as we seek forgiveness for ourselves. God says, as you forgive others. And it's right to pray for protection from temptation and evil, to recognise that there are spiritual forces inside us and outside of us that work against us, and that only God can rescue us from those things. So yes, let us call out to God, lead me not into temptation and deliver me from evil. And then just to finish, we need to recognise that the direction of this prayer is God's will and God's kingdom coming to be known and to be seen and felt here on earth as it is in heaven. Prayer isn't us seeking to escape from here and fleeing to heaven and thinking, phew, I've made it, I'm out of here. But actually, it's seeking God, petitioning God to say, Lord, let your kingdom come. Transform and renew here by your will, with your heavenly kingdom, everything here on earth. Prayer calls for God to come down and change this world, change this nation, change this community, change this church, change this me. So as we pray this, this prayer, this beautiful prayer that Jesus has taught us, we can confidently rest and be at peace that God's will is being done here on earth as it is in heaven. To finish with, Let's pray this prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from the evil one. Amen. If you found this video helpful, then do uh, let me know. Give this a like. Maybe put a comment in the comment section below. Um, I'm using a new video camera today, so I'd really appreciate if, if it works okay, because um, maybe I've missed something in the editing of this. If uh, it goes out of focus or goes out of shot or anything, let me know if it's a bit fuzzy. Uh, let me know. Uh, okay, God bless. See you next time.